when the coronavirus pandemic actually uh, broke out and uh, it, uh, it actually represented a lot of challenges for uh, African countries in general. The first one is the broadband connectivity. On the continent, we have about 34 to 35% according to GSMA penetration of broadband connectivity. That's the challenge. Why is the challenge? Because a lot of government initiative uh, and quarantine people to work from home. To be able to work from home, you need to be able to connect. Right. One thing. Second thing, the government has been calling people to do, okay, we're going to continue business as usual. How can we continue business as usual if the government services have not come online yet? So it becomes a second challenge. Mm. The government also initiative, another initiative is schools are closed, so students uh, in Europe or uh, in America, students are actually doing, they're not sitting home, they're actually uh, uh, continuing their courses. But in Africa, kids, our kids are sitting home. Why? Because we don't have the education platform and distance learning platform for e-school. So it becomes a big challenge. On the top of that, when you add cybersecurity, you know, more on people coming on online at this time, time of, uh, at this time, a period of time, you have also a cybersecurity uh, causing another issue, another challenge. What are some of the interventions you're proposing as a Smart Africa? Yeah, when this crisis starts, you know, uh, you, you really have to say no one was expecting this. And uh, of course, you would imagine like every single country, like anywhere else in the world, a country will be running around to find a solution. What do they do? Uh, and the nature of this virus, actually, which is uh, you can ha you have some people who are asymptomatic. I mean, they're sick, they don't even know, and they are contagious. How do you manage all of these in the African context? It becomes a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. And one thing I meant to say also is the fact that the mobile penetration is very high in Africa, but not everyone owns a smartphone. But at least most of the people who own most of the people, total mobile bear penetration is about 444 million in, out of the 1.3 billion population. Out of that, only 250 million has a smartphone. Not so, right. it, how, do you track, how do you track people? So, a lot of people, a lot of countries started, you know, manual uh, tracking, uh, uh, infected people, and uh, who they've been with for the past three days, where did they come from. It becomes a really big challenge. All right, so this is the health aspect of it in, in terms of contact yes. pressing uh, and, and, and providing, I guess, information and advice to people who might be potentially uh, infected. You're basically crowdsourcing uh, information and then you're put together on a platform. I'm trying to think of how this will manifest itself. What the platform it's all about is it's all about organization and organization because Smart Africa is about stakeholders management. So we inform the ICT Council of Ministers of Smart Africa. This is the initiative we are going to take. We call for project proposal. So from that, that solutions will help you do assessment in terms of health-wise. It will help you also use artificial intelligence to inform, communicate with the population, rural area, in their own language. Because we here in the city, we always think that everyone speaks English or everyone speaks French. Mm -hmm. There's a huge part of the populations in Africa who do not understand right. other language than the, the local language. So mm -hmm. that will be the communication part of it. And also that will allow us to actually fight a lot of fake news happening today on the social media. Because today, if you look at it, really what the social media does to people is actually more than the disease itself. Then how are you able to achieve, how do you think you're going to be able to achieve it uh, given some of the, the deficiencies in uh, the, the digital infrastructure that you mentioned, we talked about earlier. Uh, on the top of the project, coming up with the project, once we go through the selection process, then the process and so on and so forth, we come up with the two, three solutions. On the other hand, we are actually reaching out to our partners, institutional partners and private partners to fund these initiatives for a project to come out. So once this is done, then we will approach each single country. You know, we are in touch with them because remember, the task force we're putting together, countries are part of it. We wrote to them, we need a point of contact from your organization who will be working with Smart Africa together to go through the selection process. Mm. And once this is done and the platform comes out and the countries are free to use,